In this video, we'll be taking apart the Apple iPhone 15 Pro. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. So to start off, there are two panel up screws that have to be removed. Next, heat needs to be applied to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. I'll be using the Refox RS50 to pry the screen off as well as the back. Once the strong adhesive has been peeled off, the screen can be lifted from the right to the left. But be careful since the cables for the screen are still attached to the main board. There are six tri-wing or tri-tip screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the aluminum cover with graphite film over it to help transfer heat. There's also a liquid damage indicator sticker which is the white sticker on top. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There's more graphite film on the back of the screen to help transfer heat. There are also two Phillips screws on top by the cutouts which need to be removed. We now have a look at the ambient light sensor. There are three Phillips screws holding down the camera assembly. Looking at the camera assembly, we can see the 48 megapixel primary camera, the 12 megapixel telephoto, and the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main and telephoto camera both have second generation sensor shift optical image stabilization. To remove the earpiece speaker, there's a single Phillips screw and a standoff screw which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the earpiece speaker. Here's a look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera and the True Depth Face ID camera. Here's a look at the LiDAR sensor. To remove the battery, there are three pull tabs to help you pry the battery off. Two located on the bottom and one located on top. Generally, I don't like these type of pull tabs since they almost always tend to rip. So I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath 
making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 3290 milliamp hour battery. There are seven Phillips screws holding on the speaker assembly on the bottom, as well as the vibrator motor. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. And here's a look at the Taptic feedback motor or vibrator motor. Four more Phillips screws and a tri-wing or tri-tip screw need to be removed. There's an additional Phillips screw on the side of the frame. There are five standoff screws which also have to be removed. and two additional Phillips screws on either side of the frame. At this point, we need to remove the back plate. Heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry it off. Once the back glass is loose from the frame, it can be lifted over from the left to the right, but be careful since the flex cable is still attached to the back side of the board. There's a single tri-tip or tri-wing screw holding down the cover for the connector. So if you need to replace the back glass, all you would have to do is heat up the back, pry the back glass off, and disconnect the flex cable from the back side of the board. On this side of the back glass, we can see the MagSafe for wireless charging coil, as well as the same flex cable which leads to the secondary microphone and the LED flash. There's also more graphite film on the back to help transfer heat. Back to the front side, there are three standoff screws which are holding down the main board. Before we can completely remove the main board, this flex cable is attached to the back side of the motherboard, so we need to remove a few more screws on this side. Two additional Phillips screws have to be removed. Looking at the motherboard, it's a dual layer sandwich design motherboard with a processor and RAM sandwich in between both boards. And this flex cable, which is attached to the back side of the board, connects the 5G millimeter wave antenna on the side of the phone. And the second millimeter wave antenna is located on the back of the board. If you thought we're done with screws, there are two more Phillips screws holding down the charger port. And these two can only be removed once the back plate has been removed. And here's a look at the USB-C charger port. There's also a microphone on this side and one on this side. Here's a look at the other side of the flex cable. If you wanted to replace the buttons on either side, there are a few more Phillips screws holding the brackets in place. So you'd remove those Phillips screws and you'd be able to remove those. And there's an additional microphone located on top which is part of this antenna flex cable assembly, and that's held down in place with some more Phillips screws and tri-wing or tri-tip screws. So for the repairability score on this phone, I give it a seven out of 10. And that's if even any of the parts are replaceable. Since when it comes to Apple, most parts are locked down. And even if you replace them, they're gonna pop up some kind of error message or not work properly.
Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.